All right, folks, welcome back to Hexplain. I'm glad you're still on board. And we're starting with the three star challenges right now. And trust me, the first one is a beast already. It's the API only access as challenge, which says perform a persistent access as attack with iframe source JavaScript colon alert access as as a payload. And it additionally tells us we should do all of that without using the front end application at all. So what that means is we are not supposed to use this UI that we're seeing right now. We're only supposed to use the API. And what we are going to do first is we are going to copy that payload over here because obviously that's the one which is given to us. And next up we have to think about where in the world we could find API endpoints. And I want to show you two different ways right now. So first of all, we could go to our developer tools main JS file and fire up the search in here and search for API because that's usually where developers would store their API calls. And we see already one endpoint, which is API users we do have API feedbacks, we do have API products, we do have API quantities, address, and so on. So we could try to use those, but let me show you another way, which might be easier in that case. So we just go to our chew shop and we see a lot of interesting products like the apple chews, the banana chews, which you guys know is my favorite, the carrot chews, and so on. So what happens if I go to the banana juice? Okay, I see some information, but I cannot do much. So what happens if I log in and I've created a user for that, which is test at hacksplain.com. I'll log in, I will go back to those products and I will see if I can do something different. Yes, for example, I can give it a like. And I can say, I love um, bananas. I always wanted to tell them that I love bananas. So I will store that and send this to the shop, submit, all right. And then after I've been clicking through various um, things that I can do on OS2 shop, I will go to Burp Suite. And I will check right in here if I do see any API points which have been called. I do see one over here, which is API quantities, but it doesn't seem too interesting. Do I see another one, API challenges, quantities, challenges? All right, I was looking for products, which we've seen before in our main JS file. So what we could do right now is we could just select that endpoint. And what we see over here is that we are not having a token usually when talking to an api you would have to use a some sort of authentication token like a bearer token or something like that so let's see if we have another api call after we had logged in with our user we find one over here and look we have an authorization had a bearer token right in here so let's use that one and send it to repeater by using control r you see repeater lighting up you know that trick by now and let's just send this once again to the server doesn't do anything interesting but we have learned from the js file that there is a product endpoint so let's try and go to get api products and we do get some interesting data. And if you look closely, and we can actually use JSON Beautify for that, which is an extension that you can find in the Burp extender, we see our apple juice, our orange juice, and all the other juices that we have to buy in our old juice shop. And if we go to our banana juice, let's search for the banana juice because that's my favorite one. It says monkeys love it the most. So let's go over here and check monkeys love it the most. You can see that the description is put down right in here. So the idea right now is to try to manipulate this description 
in order to execute our XSS payload. So we go back to that and see what we can do. Usually get is used to retrieve data. So what we can do over here is we can use options, which is used to tell the user which HTTP methods you can use. And if we look over here, we see that get, had, put, patch, post, and delete are the allowed methods. So usually if you want to change something, you would use the put method. So let's try to use that. And we see that we are getting an error. So what could be wrong? There might be the path, which is wrong. So let's go back to our list, which we got over here. And once again, search for banana juice. And we see that the banana juice comes with an ID. A lot of times developers program their endpoints in a way that you have to put down the ID right after the product's endpoint um, right over here. So we see that the banana, banana juice's ID is six. So let's put down six over here and see if that works. Hey, and that worked. So now we have just the data of our banana juice. So what if we take that? Uh, I will copy this because this is the stuff that I want to change. And I will go to my input over here and put down this data. And then I will say, I'm going to change this data with a put request. So that looks all right to me so far. I will scroll down or make the window bigger for you guys. And we want to change the description, which by now still says monkey love it the most. Um, let's change this to, I don't know. What are we going to say? Hack explain loves it the most. And we'll send this to the products endpoint and if we look over here it still says monkeys love it the most and we can check that as well over here if we reload the page we go to the banana shoes it still says monkey lo monkeys love it the most in here so what could be the issue what you see over here and I talked about this before is the bearer token and if you see something like that like a long string starting with EY there's usually is a chat or JSON web token and what we can do is we can just copy this whole string and use another extension which is called JSON web tokens which you also can get in the extender tab and fire in that data and we see that this token belongs to test at hacksplain.com, who is a customer. There is a role in here. So with the token comes the role and the permission that you have by, by using that token. So this might be an issue, but we know from a previous finding that we can log in as the administrator. So let's try doing that. I'll log out, I'll log in. I will use the SQL injection payload or one equals one. I will actually link you the video of this challenge right in the top right corner and I will log in. Okay, so we're logged in as the admin. I will go back to burp, go back to my proxy tab, see if we find that login. Yeah, that was right here. And we already see that after that, there already was an API call made. So we are going to use the authorization token over here, copy it, go to our JSON web token extension and fire that in. And we can see that now we're having the token of the admin and he has the role admin. Okay, so that's interesting. So let's go back to our repeater, get rid of that string and fire in the admins. Remember that before it said monkeys love it the most. And we try to say hacks plane loves it the most. So I want to iterate over that one more time what we've been doing. 
we realized or we found the API endpoint for products, we used the ID6, which is the one for banana juice. We found that we cannot change the description by using the bearer token of a regular user. We use the SQL injection exploit to get the administrator's bearer token and now we're using that bearer token which I've just put in here and we are going to try to change the description by using that token. So let's send this again to the web app and it still says monkeys love it the most. So let us try something different. What if we are getting rid of some of those parameters? We actually just want to change the description. Let's get rid of that. And we don't want to change anything else apart from that. I'll just delete this over here. Whoop. And we will send this once again to the endpoint. So that's interesting. It still doesn't seem to work. It still says monkeys love it the most. So what else might we be doing wrong? So let's see. We're using the authorization token of an admin who has full permissions. We're changing the description of the product number six with the ID number six, which is our banana juice, but it still doesn't work. So what if we add the content type? Because we're actually sending JSON to the endpoint, but it doesn't say so in the request. So what if we say content type is application slash JSON and send this to our endpoint? Hey, and that worked. So that finally says Hacksplain loves it the most. Let us check if that worked out fine. I'll go back to my banana shoes. Hacksplain loves it the most. I love that. All right, so now we gotta grab our payload one more time. And that was the payload. So I will do that and jump back to my bird Peter. So what if we get rid of Hacksplain? Unfortunately, I gotta delete that, although Hexplain really loves banana juice the most. And I will, um, let me do that again, I will fire in this payload. Hmm, interesting. You gotta be careful over here, you can already see it in the color coding of Burb's repeater that as we're using this apostrophe character right over here, we're finishing this first string and then we're opening up a new one right over here so this is not going to work what we gotta do is we have to escape this character by using backslash and we gotta do this one more time over here so that our entire payload is fully functioning and you can see that by looking at the color coding the whole string right now is marked green, which is what we want to have. So now we're using the payload out of the challenge description, and we know that this is going to change our banana juice description. So let's send this to the server. We are seeing right over here that the description has changed, and that already looks pretty promising. So let's see. Oh, we already got the green box over here telling us that we have solved the challenge. But we obviously want to see the persisted or stored cross-site scripting attack in its full prime. So let's go back to OWASP 2 shop. And I would assume that if I click on the banana juice right now, I see my alert box popping up. So let's wait for it. 3, 2, 1, go. Uh, go, 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 go. And here it is, XSS. That's what we hackers want to see and what we love. All right, I'll close this. Thank you so much for watching. This was an interesting challenge. I hope you liked it. 
stay tuned check out all the other videos subscribe in the top right corner and yeah i would um appreciate if you share this channel with a couple of friends of yours see you next time